I have a shorter video this month, as instead of covering a single issue of Nintendo Power Magazine, I'm going to be talking about that Donkey Kong Country video that was sent out to Nintendo Power subscribers last issue. I decided to watch the video, kind of figuring where it would fit in the programming schedule. And long story short, I'm actually there's a lot more to say about it than I anticipated, enough that I don't feel it would do it justice shoving it in with a with the big, large bonus episode kind of thing. So we're going to talk about it now. Probably the thing that grabbed my attention about this video right off the bat was that, up to this point, this is the first appearance of, Play it, of the Play It Loud campaign in a big way in a Nintendo Power thing. Now, at this point in Nintendo's history, they've been running ads as part of the campaign on TV and in other magazines, but it's generally stayed out of Nintendo Power magazine. There have been exceptions. Each issue starts out with an ad basically for Nintendo Power and for ancillary strategy guides, which is meant for if you're picking the magazine up off a newsstand. But that's the extent of it. Outside of that, Play It Loud has stayed out of the trade dress. The mastheads for the various columns in the magazine have generally been unchanged since the last big shift, which predated the start of Play It Loud. It's clean and has style without being overly flashy, as opposed to Play It Loud, which is very much about flash and, and style. On the other hand, from the get-go of this video, we have full letterboxing, we have negative images, we have color filters, we have occasional dust angles, we have of sped up video, we've got quick cuts, and all of the camera work is handheld. The video doesn't have, really have credits, so we don't get the name of the interviewer, so I had to do some googling, and he's played by a stand-up comic named Josh Wolf. Wolf's look in the video has a definite greetings fellow kids vibe, with a grunge outfit, long hair under a baseball cap, and an attitude that is generally irreverent, but not hostile. The interview style is very much one where he presents that he thinks what he's talking about is cool, but he doesn't have to be deferential, reverential, somber, or subdued about it. This is also played out by a whole bunch of running jokes related to Nintendo having tons of bananas around the office, and with Wolf frequently being offered bananas to snack on, because it's Donkey Kong Country and you're collecting bananas. This is also where the camera work comes in. The interviews over the course of the piece use camera work to provide a sense of candor. The camera is generally stationary, but because of how it's placed, it never feels locked off the way conventional TV interview camera work does. Normally in TV interviews, the camera is placed, if not in the actual point of view of the interv interviewer, in some place to imply that it is the point of view of the interviewer. Again, assuming the interviewer is not on camera. Here, the interviewer is always on camera, uh, more or less. And the camera is not necessarily placed to imply their field of view. Additionally, several of the interview subjects are joined in the middle of doing something else, giving the impression that these interviews in particular are completely off the cuff, and none of the information here is being filtered through what PR is ready or not ready to disclose yet. This video also has the first mention we've had thus far of the treehouse. Um... In this case, with the outright statement that the group of Nintendo was formed relatively recently and was named after Donkey Kong's treehouse in this game. In terms of information on the game itself, most of what we get in the interviews is material that we've already seen in articles in this magazine. Instead, what this video is more able to do that you haven't gotten from the magazine or other coverage is finally see the game in motion. Now, in the late 90s and early 2000s, with QuickTime and the real player format, since we're pre-Flash video, allowing sites like GameSpot, GameSpy, and IGN uh, to distribute gameplay footage, this would become less novel. However, here, you get to see the game in motion and hear the game's music. Probably the most memed part of this video, related to music, is the interview with Donkey Kong Country's composer, David Wise where he discusses the game's gore and Nintendo's plan to put out a soundtrack album to the game, while Jeff Wolf rocks out to the soundtrack in a very exaggerated manner. Now, the music is good, and it's definitely one of the benefits of presenting the game in this manner, because you have the ability to experience the music in this way. But man, Jeff Wolf is such a goof-a-doof. 
The video ends with a very brief, almost split-second tease of footage of Killer Instinct, with presumably the implication that we get a later video on that game. This video is incredibly 90s. Stylistically, it's aged poorly. While you get some modern YouTube videos with fast edits, the lightning cuts in part of this video are jarring and actually abstract from being able to see more of the game. Once we get into the later portion of the video and we actually get to see the game in action for a couple minutes, um, with like several second stretches, it becomes a lot more engaging. The stylistic elements are also kind of dumb, like a person deciding to use all the After Effects plugins. I definitely appreciate how modern video game coverage, even coverage specifically directed at younger audiences, has started to recognize it's okay to just slow down and let the game speak for itself, with the Let's Play being the ultimate extension of that. It's also frustrating because it shows that one of the things Content ID has done is crank up that editing rhythm again because of having to use that quick cadence to avoid Content ID. My worry is, going forward, is that there will be editors and directors who look at YouTube, are unfamiliar with the difficulties of having to contend with Content ID, see the quick cuts and edits and think, oh, that rhythm is what viewers want to see, when we don't. It's creators are forced to edit that way because of the algorithm. Oh, that out of the way, next month we return to our regularly scheduled issues of Nintendo Power. See you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>